Welcome. In today's lesson, you're going to learn all about the armor of God and seven truths to identify and be victorious against your true enemy. What's up? I'm Pastor Brian with Empowered Christian Ministries, and I'm here bringing a lesson from our Driveway Discipleship Program, empowering you to be a better follower of Jesus in just 10 minutes a day. Let's dive in. Is your enemy, your government, other nations, sinful cultural trends, terrorism, political party, or global poverty? Or maybe you feel like it's your selfish spouse, your health, your financial struggles, or your own bad habits or your own worst enemy. Did you know that they're not your true enemy? In this lesson, we'll discuss what is and how you can effectively fight against it with seven biblical truths. Truth number one, our true enemy is sin and Satan and demons. Our primary struggle is against spiritual evil. Ephesians 6.12 says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but it's against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil, even the heavenly realms. They're also described in Colossians 2.15, Ephesians 2.2, 2, and 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. You see, the bad things that I just listed, they only exist because of human sin, and demonic influence. These things are the root cause. Romans 6 teaches that all who sin are slaves to sin, and the outcome of sin is death. Hebrews 2.14 says that Satan, the devil, holds the power of death because we're held in slavery by our fear of death. When we commit sin, or if we lose our confidence in the gospel about our past sins being forgiven and washed away, then we give authority and power to Satan to hold sin against us. And then he has increased access into our lives. Truth number two, the church is Satan's primary target. Christians sometimes falsely think that Satan's causing evil and sin in the world, but he doesn't much bother with what Christians are doing. Yes, he is the prince of this world. See John twelve thirty one. And he's called the lowercase g, God of this age. See 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. But he's also the thief that comes to steal, kill, and destroy the sheep. See John 10.10. 10. And he's numerously called our adversary, which is what the word Satan means. Revelation 12.17 describes Satan as determined to wage war against the rest of her offspring, those who keep God's commands and hold fast their testimony about Jesus. Paul reminds us in 2 Corinthians 2.11 not to let Satan outwit us by not learning and being unaware of his schemes. Truth number three, the gospel provides everything we need for victory. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 56 and 57 say, The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus has broken the power of sin and death over us. He has purchased for us total forgiveness of sin eternal life, and adoption into God's family. He's also given us the power and authority over demons and all spiritual evil. And he empowers us by his spirit to be victorious. Truth number four, God allows our faith to be tested through attacks. Ephesians 6.11 says, Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Ephesians 6.14 says it again. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when, not if, when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything, to stand. 
You see, Revelation 14, 12 says, This calls for patient endurance on the part of the people of God who keep his commands and remain faithful to Jesus. Peter understood how God allows believers to be tested. Jesus even told Peter he was going to be sifted by Satan and even fail three times, but he wouldn't fall away permanently. See Luke 22, verses 31 and 32. Later, in his letter, 1 Peter, he wrote in chapter 5, verse 10, And the God of all grace, who called you into his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Truth number five. You need to wear defensive armor. First, you have to remain mentally alert. First Peter 5, 8 says, Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Second, fix your mind on your new identity as a child of God and a disciple of Jesus. Ephesians 6.17 says, To wear our confidence in our own salvation like a helmet, allowing it to guard our mind and our thoughts. Ephesians 6.14 says, Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place. The truth of the gospel holds the rest of our armor and all other beliefs and practices in place. It's the truth of the gospel and the forgiveness of our sin and imputation of Christ's righteousness to us that protect us. It's our newfound blamelessness over our past sin that's been washed away, as well as all our ongoing spirit-led victory over future sin temptation that protects our heart and all of our internal organs. That's if we trust in God's promises and wear them as though our life depends on them. Because it does. Our final defense is found in Ephesians 6.16. It says, The shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Again, it's our defensive shield. It's our trust in our faith in the gospel. Truth number six. You need to also fight with offensive weapons. In addition to remaining alert for defense, we also need to remain alert for offense too. We need to live by the Holy Spirit, led by and walking in step with Him. Since this is a spiritual battle, we need to fight it with spiritual weapons, namely prayer and the Word of God, the Bible. Ephesians 6.17 calls the sword of the Spirit. And Hebrews 4.12 says, God's word is alive and active. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. Jesus demonstrated how to use God's word against Satan in his wilderness temptation. See Matthew 4. Ephesians 6.18 also says, To pray in the Spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. And with this in mind, be alert, says alert again, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Our prayers asked and answered by God are a powerful weapon for us. Truth number seven, our strength comes from trust in the Lord. Ephesians 6.10 says, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. You see, it's his power, not ours, that gives us the strength to win. James 4, 7 says, Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil, 
and he will flee from you. 1 Peter 5, 9 says, Resist him, speaking of Satan, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. Our ability to resist the devil's attacks relies on how close we are to God. So stand firm in your faith in the gospel, draw near to God, and you'll increase your strength and protection. Plus, you'll further develop your relationship with God and your transformation into Christ's likeness. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Jesus' name, amen. If you would like a free two-page PDF of this lesson and a couple of action steps that you can take, just click the link below or go to empoweredchristian.org forward slash driveway dash discipleship. And I'd be happy to email it to you. If you like this video, please share it. And be sure to check out all of our other driveway discipleship lessons and set a reminder so that you come back tomorrow and do another lesson. As always, be empowered and go and advance the kingdom of God today. God bless.